Hey there everyone, how's it going? Tarun here and in this video we are going to continue with events but now we are going to talk about the E which is the event parameter which we are passing okay and how important it is okay now what we are going to do is first of all create again an event listener which which listens to a button which is being clicked alright so let us uh, look at let us first go to our code alright let us go to myscripts.js uh, we'll remove this part okay and we'll comment all of the code you can do that by control a to select everything and control forward slash to uh, comment all the code now the functionality of our website is completely dropped okay and now what we're gonna do is let's remove this button okay save it and we have this form here all right and we have this button uh, type submit class btn let's give an id to the button okay and the id is going to be uh, btn submit okay btn submit so let's go into this uh, place again and what we're going to do is we're going to create an uh, an event listener okay so before that let's write uh, no um, we need not write the function let's create the event listener now let's just create the event listener so document dot uh, let's say get element by id and we're gonna pass in btn submit okay so it has got that uh, button dot and we're gonna add an event listener event listener all right and that event is going to be click all right and the function which we are going to call is going to be function we're going to write it here itself okay and this is going to be a function and within the function let's just console dot log clicked okay hit enter tells cannot read property add event listener of null Okay, why is that document get element by ID BTN submit? Let us uh, copy this. Okay, refresh the page, clear it, write it down, and hit enter. All right, the page wasn't uh, refreshed. Okay, so now we have added an event listener, and once I click this, it gives clicked. Okay, and any number of times it shows clicked so reload the page so we have this thing now it is being clicked now what I want to do is by default this thing receives an event parameter here E okay we need not pass anything there but it receives E which is really powerful so let me console.log E now okay let us hit enter and when I hit when I click on create note this E has been console.logged and when you see inside this it shows a lot of stuff alt key bubbles okay and cancel bubble client x client y and a lot more okay and one thing which we are gonna see look at immediately is this target which shows us okay which shows us who has called this event so what we could essentially do is we could have many tags call the same uh, same event listener function and based on this e dot target we can decide on what action we want to do all right so that is also possible so essentially this e dot l e dot target gives us the actual element which was clicked okay or who or whatever element fired this event all right so using this e dot target you can do a lot of stuff so one such thing which we are going to see is we're going to do e dot target dot you can grab the id you can grab the class name or you can grab the class list you can grab the type etc etc so let's start with id so e dot target dot id and when i click on create note E is not defined that is because we haven't given E there so let's copy this and make sure you mention E within this function and hit enter now when I click create note 
uh, it tells again e is not defined all right so let us reload this page okay refresh this page clear the console hit enter go inside e all right then we have e dot target dot id uh, hit enter and click on create note we get the id we get it as btn submit okay so that is the id now if you want to check what the class is then you just tell e dot target dot class with of course e in here and hit enter and when i hit when i click create note it is going to give btn submit as the class which is wrong right so since it's giving wrong results what we're going to do is we're going to clear we're going to refresh and each time we are uh, going to show the output we're going to reload the page okay so let's give e dot target dot class and e hit enter and when i click on create note it gives undefined why is that because it is not just class it is class name okay So by the way, since it was showing wrong results, what we're going to do is essentially every time we run, we're going to refresh the page, clear the console and paste it in and we're going to grab the class name. Okay. E dot target dot class name hit enter. And when I click on create note, it is going to give us the class name, which is BTN and which is correct. All right. So you can again grab the class list. You can again tell the type. Okay. That which shows you the type of the event. Let's reload the page and paste it in and e dot target dot type and hit enter and once i click on create note it is going to give submit so it is of type submit right so that is what it tells now one more amazing thing which you can uh, do with, with with this e dot target is that you can get the exact uh, mouse position where it was clicked okay let me show you that let me reload the page clear this paste it in and what you can use is you can use e dot target uh, no not the target okay you can get you can do e dot client x okay which gives us the uh, x axis coordinate which is from the left okay and you can print in comma let us give a space and let's print e dot client y which gives us the y axis coordinate of the mouse point and that would be from the top okay let's hit enter cannot read event, event listener of okay let's just copy this reload the page clear this paste it in hit enter and when i click on create note it's going to give 52 237 and when i click here it's going to give 72 uh, 262 and when I click here, it is going to give that coordinate, so on. Okay, so it gives us the coordinate where this click was done. Of course, it doesn't work outside, but within the button, it gives the coordinate. So one uh, one fun project which you can do is based on where the user is clicking on the screen, you can show a specific color. You can generate a random color. So take this as a challenge, and let me see who comes out with the answer for this question. Okay, so the task is based on where the user clicks on the screen. Okay, you have to set the color of any of the button or uh, a div or anything with a particular color. Okay, and that can be, of course, that can be random, but it should be based on where the user is clicking. So you have to get the uh, coordinates of the uh, X and Y axis and use those numbers to generate the color. Let me see how you do that. All right. So there are a few more uh, amazing things you can do with this uh, event. So what if you have a feature in your website where you want something to be done when this button is being clicked using the control button? I mean by holding the control button. So I hold the control button and I click the button. I want something to happen or I hold the alt button and I click the button something should happen or I hold the shift button and I click the button something should happen now how do I handle that so let us clear this console uh, by clicking here reload this page alright and let us uh, paste it in here 
and what we're going to do is we're going to check here if the control key or control key has been held when clicking on the button so you can check that by using e dot c t r l key and hit enter now when i click it normally it tells false when i when i hold the control and, and i click it is going to tell true okay this is without holding it when i hold it it is going to tell true similarly for alt key it is e dot a l t key and for shift key it is s h i f t key so using this you can figure out if the user is clicking the button using control alt shift either of these and you can use if statements to filter these out in your function all right so this is one thing which you can do with event and the most important uh, the most important application of this which we are going to use is e dot prevent default so the way you do that is let's clear this let's clear the console reload as the page and here what you do is e is there right so you just use this e dot prevent default okay hit enter and when i click on it of course it's not going to do anything but the point here is uh, of course we should not be uh, logging it out all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste this the previous code okay remove the console.log and the code is going to be like e dot prevent default so usually when you submit a form okay what happens is uh, usually it, it finds that action part in the form and it submits to the uh, action page okay and most of the times this results in uh, reloading the page all right so if you do not want that default activity what you would do is you would write e dot prevent default okay and once you write this e dot prevent default what would happen is the default action of submitting the button uh, would not happen and the page will not reload okay and this is mostly used within the forms and in the project which we do later you're going to observe that uh, we'll be using e dot prevent default along with the form okay and this is one thing which you're going to see a lot being used e dot prevent default especially with forms okay so that is all for this video there are few events which i showed you in the previous video you can go through those uh, events okay and you can use them with this uh, add event listener say for example mouse down is when the, the event occurs when the user presses the mouse button over an element or mouse enter is when the event occurs when the mouse pointer is moved onto an element okay mouse leave is when when the pointer is moved out of an element okay so there are many events to play with here so you can use these and you can try uh, you experimenting with how they work okay so that's going to be pretty fun okay and yes, and few interesting ones here are like key down key press key up which has to do with the keyboard keys so once someone starts typing you can uh, you can fire an event and do something all right so you would have seen right on these websites and all when you as you start typing they tell you if your password is of strong or weak or very strong so on so how do they do that with events only so as the user is typing they fire this key down or this key press or this key up event and they read the content of the input of the input box okay or the value of the input box and then they use the functions to validate if that user is uh, entering a strong uh, password okay so that is how again events are used in real world applications so that is all for this video if you have any doubts please feel free to ask me otherwise we'll be moving on to the next video see you there